we had uh, anywhere from 40 to, 40 to 50 mile an hour solid straight wind and, and uh, wave action was in the 25 to 30, 30 foot range. Pretty brutal. We'll stick it out a little bit while longer, see if we can maybe pick up a nighter flying by. It's actually so nasty, I don't even think the birds are flying. Finally, we caught a break in the weather. Mo had been hunting out here for about 10 years, and he said it was one of the flattest days he'd ever seen. We stayed out there, we were looking for more kings, and then off to the left, here comes two old squads. And when they first came in, they were kind of separated, one above the other one. And right as they were starting to get to the decoys, they lined up with one another, and I thought, oh baby, this is gonna happen, it's gonna happen. Pull the trigger. Yeah! There are people in this world that go looking for adventure. And then there are those that live it every day. Alaska Outdoors Television. Experience Alaska like never before. King Eiders, they're the holy grail of North American waterfowl. And we're here this week on St. Paul Island, way out in the middle of the Bering Sea, hunting with Captain Mo and Jeff with Alaskan Eider Outfitters going after the prize King Eiders. For you hardcore waterfowlers, this is the pinnacle of waterfowl hunting in the entire world. As most waterfowl hunters know, you gotta get up pretty early in the morning to get a leg up, or should I say a wing up on ducks, especially here on St. Paul Island. Everybody got, their, got your licenses, right? Yep. Everybody good? Yep. You wouldn't know it by looking around, but it's nearly 10 o'clock in the morning. Another half hour or so, and the bird should be moving. Captain Mo and Jeff are getting the decoys set out here. What we're doing is we're long line, and it's so deep in here, you're not going to get decoys to anchor on the bottom. So they're dropping a line behind the boat. We have a pretty calm day out here in terms of Alaska mid-December uh, weather. So we're basically going to get out here in the bay, float, and see if these birds come in. Trolling for kings, I like this. <laughs> Mo, if the salmon were in, we could have a rod out at the same time. Yeah, we could halibut fish. Yeah. Back bouncing for halibut. Yeah. Right there. Golly, there are a lot of birds moving. Wow. It's going to be a stoner shoot today, too, I think. Yeah. A stoner shoot. Yeah. yeah. That's a bunch of white wings. All white wings? Appeared to be. Hard to say. I mean, we, there are some blacks that we'll get out here, too. Sometimes they'll mix in with them. The white winged scoter is a duck I definitely want to see on my wall someday. And if the opportunity presents itself, I'll do my best to try and make it happen. Four low on the deck right here. Coming off the starboard, coming right at us. Well, they're coming. See them? Right there. It's like some white wings. I think that back one's a big one. They're, they're coming. They're coming back. Oh, now they're coming. Now they're coming. That back one's a drake. Okay. Back one's a drake. This end pair right here. Don't worry about me. Which one? Back one. Back one. Back one. There you go. They're both two. Nice shot. Your head up. No, he's down. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Now we can just tow the decoys to get him, huh? Yeah. Don't get tangled up. Right. It's, and it's kind of a, with these sea ducks, you know, if you get a cripple, yeah. the quicker you can get after them, oh, okay. finish them off with a stop, yeah. it, it saves lost birds. Yeah. So yeah. if you're anchored up, you've got to undo that anchor line. Yeah. Captain Moe's got the net. Scoter down. Scoter right. down. So this is juvenile, yep. right? Yeah. Nice. Yeah, nice. Well, nice plump sea duck. Yeah. I like the setup, the approach that these guys use when you're hunting the bay. You're basically out there floating in a boat, you have your string of decoys behind you, and you're going with the tide or with the wind. Being able to do this where you're not anchoring up, where you can cover water, that allows you to kind of see where the birds are moving and to get in their flight path. And we did just that. We moved right into the path of some more white winged scoters. Get them, Scott. Get them, get them. Heads up. Dull. It's common practice when hunting sea ducks to shoot a wounded bird once it hits the water. This is to keep it from diving and getting away. You might have to get after him. Yeah, we kind of motor over that way and see if I can find him. 
There he is. How far out? Um, Look at him coming back. Yeah. He was out there a ways. We better get after him, though. When sea ducks start diving, some species can swim underwater more than 40 yards at a shot and hold their breath for more than a minute. This makes them nearly impossible to catch up with. Boy, a lot of birds out there. After knocking down a couple white wing scudders, I was more intent on trying to see if there were any king eiders out there or if we could maybe get some harlequins or, uh, or old squaws in range. Wait, kill the motor, Mo. I got it, son. Here it is. Ah, uh, there's only, they're all juvies. They're all juvies. Yeah. They're all juvies. They're all juvies. That's hard. You want to pull the trigger on these things yeah. and then, uh, yeah, seeing they're all juvies. Every last one. The safety was off. Yeah. There's there's right there. there. Yeah. Man, they're pretty. Mm -hmm. We kind of puttered around out there. We didn't really see the king eiders flying. We saw a few flocks, but they were a long ways away. Certainly nothing within range. So we decided to pack it up and call it a day. We'd at least seen some king eiders, and I was fortunate to take a beautiful white winged scoter. And although the scene was picturesque with the Arctic sun setting over the Bering Sea, something inside me just felt like this was the calm before the storm. The next morning, the wind was blowing hard from the south, too hard to even get out in the boat. So we hopped in the truck and headed towards the north end of the island to see what the weather was like there. So they say in Alaska, if you don't like the weather, wait 10 minutes, it'll change. Didn't quite happen that fast, but overnight we got a big uh, storm moved in here. Mo, well, yesterday we were out, beautiful bluebird day. Not a lot of birds flying, but enough kings to keep the optimism high. Yeah. Today's a little bit different. I know you have a lot of access to the whole island here. We came out here on the point, why? Um, mostly this morning because the wind's gonna come, it's gonna change and it's gonna get pretty rough. So we wanted to kind of come out here and gauge what we had for birds around. After yesterday afternoon, you know, seeing those birds out there, we know we got some birds on the south side of the island. Now we're on the north side of the island. So it's, you know, we wanna come out here and kind of do a scouting mission and see because the weather's gonna progressively get worse. Um, so we're probably gonna be forced to the point. So you kind of wanna come out here and gauge what you got, so. The first morning we hunted from the island, it was nasty. It was blowing 20, 25 miles per hour. We had breakers coming right at us. There were eiders flying, and a lot of eiders, but they were offshore, 80, 100, 150 yards. We threw a couple prayer shots at them, but just couldn't connect on. However, Jeff did connect on a beautiful harlequin duck, one of the most prized sea ducks in the world. There's a beautiful drake Harley, right there. Harley, Harley. Harley. Nice oh, shot. Got him. There He's you dead. go, nice shot. He's dead, one shot. See, this is what happens when you get a guide that gets to hunt. You let, let him pull the, the trigger here. Now watch him retreat. First harlequin I've shot in about three years. Is it really? Yeah. yeah. Back, Jeff, back, back. Woohoo! The man can shoot, I tell you that. He made a perfect hit on that thing. Yeah, we don't get to, we don't get to hunt very much. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I just want to see this they haven't, uh, They haven't allowed dogs on the island since uh, the early uh, um, 20th century because of the seals that are on the island. Yeah. And they compete, they bark, because yeah. dogs bark. So, uh, so seriously, yeah, they, they don't have They dogs. compete with the seals, yeah. You know, the seals are declining in population okay. since the, you know, the 20s. Yeah. This used to be a major, major seal um, harvest area, yeah. the Pribilofs. That's yeah. why the Russians came here in the first place. Yeah. That's why the Aleuts were brought here in the first place, because yeah. of their hunting skills. The, the Russians brought the Aleuts exactly. in for the fur trade, yep. right? They brought them because of the fur trade, yeah. yep. This is the highest concentration of northern fur seals in the world. In the world right here. Nice drake. Nice retrieve there, Jeff. Yeah. Beautiful drake, Carly. Actually, not that bad to eat. I might, I might actually eat this little fella. Let's get him out. One thing that really surprised me, especially this late in the year, was that there were still fur seals hanging around the island. In late December, Typically in late May, the male seals start to arrive on the island where they stake out their territories. The female seals usually arrive in late June, and by mid-July, there'll be hundreds of young pups around the island 
with some pods containing over 100,000 seals. As the hunting started to slow down, we decided to head back to town and take a tour of the community that was originally established because of the Russian fur trade. One of the things I love about coming to these remote places in Alaska is checking out the villages, the locals, how they live, seeing what life here is all about. You know, for years I lived up on the North Slope and taught school there and have traveled to dozens and dozens of villages throughout the entire state. And it's a very, very unique piece of life, village life is. And here we are in one of the most remote destinations in Alaska, St. Paul Island. And we're gonna take some time in the middle of the day to check out some of the sites, starting with the local museum. Oh, some seal skins. Uh-oh, this is what we're after. The king eider, huh? Mm -hmm. The and drake and a hen, yep. Beautiful birds. That's a nice looking mount, too. Yeah, this is a pretty neat little museum. This is, this is Aleut history right here. Yeah, well, it's amazing history. I mean, the Russian people brought in the Aleuts for their hunting skills. For their hunting skills, yep. And brought them to the islands from the, from the lower Aleutians. To hunt the fur seals, yeah. basically. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's kind of a bittersweet story when you know it is. what really takes place. But it's amazing, amazing place for a culture to survive like this as long as they yeah. have fur seals. This is back in '49. The seal herd. Spear heads. The history and the, what they did to survive is phenomenal. These are grass baskets, which they're known for. Right? They're known for that. Yeah. Yep. All sorts of cool stuff. A lot of birdies come here. It was a neat museum with all sorts of artifacts and photographs from a culture that has endured an extremely challenging past. Today, however, life's drastically different than the days of the Russian fur trade. There are no Russian ships on the horizon and fur seals are no longer the sought after commodity. Alaska is known for a lot of things, especially when it comes to fish and game. This right here is one of the best eating sea animals in the world. It's a snow crab. Of course, the Alaska is also known for Dungeness and King Crab, but the snow crab is one of the most popular deep sea crabs that they get here. And uh, they're loading them right off the ship right now. There are three ships in here that have been doing this 24-7 since we've been here. We just wanted to come check things out in the middle of the day when the hunting is slow. And I tell you, the docks are a buzz. When we're out here decoy hunting, you know, we're trying to get those birds that are moving from their roost to their feed points. When we're hunting on the points, then we're getting those birds that are coming from here and from out on the other side of the island, coming up at the shoreline and then going around to their feed points. This kind of sea duck hunting, it's a, just a matter of intercepting them, you know. We always try to keep the lines uh, kind of perpendicular to their flight path so that when they do come from a certain direction, they'll see them then turn to them and bank, and then usually they'll follow the line right up to, you know, to the boat. One reason we weren't seeing very many king eiders was due to the unusual weather St. Paul was having this year. Not too long ago, the staff of Alaska Outdoors TV was out here filming. It was a little bit different conditions then. They were getting hammered by high winds, snow, ice, and it was an ugly, ugly hunt. But that is the type of weather that'll often push these birds in. I was kind of worried going into this hunt because there hadn't been much weather. The pack ice was still hanging very far up north. There wasn't much snow on the ground when we started, and it was gone after our first day or two. But Captain Mo worked hard. He maneuvered us around the bay until eventually we found the eider line. White wind. Scoter. White wing. White wing. 
Well, we got scoters, that's for sure. Or maybe it was the scoter line. Regardless, birds were moving and we were in perfect position. Then, suddenly, out of nowhere, here came a pair of long-tailed ducks. And I dropped them both with one shot. Congratulations. Scott's double. No. Right dead. on, brother. Right oh on. Gosh. Even though it wasn't a king eider, getting a double on two old squaws like that, that was one of my most memorable parts of this hunt. Mo was excited. Jeff was excited. There you go. Scott's oh, double. Oh, nice. Beautiful, buddy. Net him up. Beautiful drakes, too. Look at that. Oh, look at those tails. My gosh. Beautiful scotch. That one's really that great. Something? Beautiful scotch double, buddy. <laughs> Man, Beautiful. a lot of people, this is their favorite hunting sea duck in Alaska. Of course, you're up here with Alaska Nighter Outfitters. You don't know what you're going to get, but you know that prime sea ducks like this are on tab just waiting for you. Dude, look at the that tail on that. Nice that is a booner. Yeah. I think that's the best one I've ever got right that's there. Right. The thing that stands out most in my mind about this hunt is it is not a high volume waterfowl shoot. You know, you're not sitting in the swamps or hitting the duck marshes, you know, looking to get a, a bag limit of mallards, teal, widgeon, pintail, whatever it is. You're out here for one bird, one bird specifically, the king eider, and if another species happens by, well, that's just a bonus. I hadn't given up hope yet. There were still plenty of sea ducks on the move, but we just weren't seeing the king eiders in range. However, my trigger finger was itching. And when that happens, it means good things are about to come. We got a big yeah. flock of yeah, we got birds right here. Right here. Right here. Right here. This one, this one. Get that close one, close one. Good hit. He's hit. He's going down. Going down. Come on. You'll go down. He's going down. Nice shot, Scott. Nice shot. He's on the water. Thanks. He didn't go down easy. No. Congratulations. <laughs> I got a mark. I got yeah. a mark. Go get him. Holy crud. I was happy with that one bird. I didn't care if anything else flew. I got one king eider. And again, this is a trophy hunt. You know, if, if you get anything beyond that, in my mind, that's just icing on the cake. He's right dead ahead if I see him. Yeah, he's right dead ahead. Yep. Yes. Decoy beautifully. Oh my nice gosh, bird. he pitched in nice. Big beef. <sighs> Good adult. Oh, yeah, not really a bad. bad. He's kind of cool looking. I'm shaking over a Look at that. Look at that. Oh, oh man. my gosh. He's awesome. Look that at that. Look at the marking sweet. on that. He's not a uh, he's not a real big big bird, but he's yeah. beautifully marked. And look oh, at the V on that bugger. V. That's a beautiful bird. Nice dusty blue feathers, green cheek awesome. patch. A king eider right here in Alaska. Again, this is a trophy hunt. This isn't come out here and burn through the shells unless you're Captain Mo shooting scoters. Okay. But this is what we're after. We've got to get back to hunting. Holy cow. The birds were really moving, and we were exactly where we needed to be, right on the eider line. We were in the ninth inning. It was our last day to hunt on the water, but I'd already shot my first great king eider, so nothing else really mattered. Except this pair of king eiders flying right at us. I think they're both drakes. Drake. Both drakes. This one coming right at you. Take this one on the rear. Shoot that one. Nice shot. Nice job, buddy. Oh, nice. That wasn't too hard. He was coming right at us. Holy crud. That thing was coming right at us. My heart was kind of like I was shooting a 350-inch bull elk. No, take the one on the right. Take the one on the right. Oh, Shot that yeah. one right in the face, Woo. buddy. Two of them in the wheelhouse, baby. Right, more flying. Oh He's swimming gosh. away. Got just, there's diving. He's right under the decoy. He's going to pop yep. up. Yep. Pop up right. I see him. I see him. Oh. All right, reload with big loads. That was a, that was a decoy king. <laughs> so there it is, the prize king eider. Now you know eider down is one of the best insulators in the world. In fact, there are still some Scandinavian countries that that farm eiders and use their down. You know these things have just an amazing 
feather system, and of course next to their body is the down. They're so well insulated for living in this Arctic condition. Of course, big web feet. These things have been radio telemetry collared ones have been um, uh, monitored diving 180 feet deep. We have more birds coming. It's a white wing. Look like it. Or a juvie. So just like that, we had two eiders in the box and we figured what the heck, it's a beautiful day. We'll stay out here until dark if we have to. Fortunately, we didn't have to wait that much longer and another bird came through. Hit him, kill him, kill him. I knew without a doubt in my mind I'd hit that bird twice. And as it descended in the distance, I had a feeling we had another eider down. It was the biggest drake so far, an absolutely beautiful bird. It brought back a lot of great memories, the times I lived on the North Slope, hunting eiders with the Inupiat Eskimos in the little village of Point Lay. The seas were still calm. We had one bird left. We had juvenile king eiders decoying. We had hens decoying. It was solid proof that you could flag these things in. A lot of these birds we were seeing four or five, 600 yards away. Mo would get on the flag. Jeff would get on the flag. I mean, these guys, they, they were working out there. And it was working. This method of flagging king eiders in on the open sea was working these birds were pitching in from every direction. Now that I've tasted king otter blood, no other duck will do. It was nonstop sea duck after sea duck. The scoters were everywhere. Harlequin, long tails, and then suddenly, there it was, a king eider. Yeah, four kings down, baby. <laughs> Fourth one's always the biggest. Oh, that's oh. a big one. Woo baby. That's a big one. That's money. Oh, my God. Woo, Mongolita. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that bird right there. Look at the frontal lobe on that thing. Just incredible. Mongo bird right there. Had that's a, a giant for this time of year. That is incredible. Look at that big old. Oh, beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful greens. Absolutely beautiful bird. This week's hunt with uh, Scott is, uh, I think, has led up to his expectations. He harvested four nice king drakes this week. He hasn't hunted kings in over 20 years since he lived up on the slope. So it's been kind of a kind of a cool thing for him to come out here and hunt with us. And he shot all of his kings over decoys, which was really cool for him and for us, you know, to to, uh, to be able to hunt with him. So it's been a really cool experience having him out here this week. We fought some nasty weather in the pursuit of these birds. High winds, sideways rain. By the end of the day, my face was wind burned and my bones aching. But I wouldn't have had it any other way. This is duck hunting, Alaska style. Four adult drake eiders, four adult drake long tails, a white winged scoter, and a gorgeous drake harlequin. Some amazing sea ducks for sure. In one of the most amazing places on earth, St. Paul Island, Alaska.